What's your advice to the next, next House Speaker? <laughs> That was President Biden yesterday uh, laughing off a question about the next Speaker of the House, Ohio Congressman and House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan and Louisiana Congressman and House Majority Leader Steve Scalise have both announced that they are running for the job of House Speaker. Scalise already receiving support from Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik and House Majority Whip Tom Emmer. Uh, joining us right now to weigh in is New Jersey Congressman Jeff Van Drew, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Who do you support for Speaker? I support Jim Jordan. Let me say something first, though. These are both good, able, smart, conservative leaders. Either one of them would do well. But I have a, a strong relationship with Jim. I am on the Judiciary Committee. I've worked with him a great deal. You know, I committed to him even in the past when we had the 15 rounds with Speaker McCarthy that if he wanted to run, I would support him. I keep my commitments. I think he'll be good. I think he'll be solid. I think he can bring, well, actually, we brought 98 percent of the Republican caucus together. We have a few individuals that seem to be on a kamikaze mission, and frankly, the members are getting tired of it. But let me tell you something, Maria. They were laughing. When I say they, I mean the Democrats. They didn't laugh when the cameras were on, but I was in the halls. They were high fine They were laughing. It was a joke to them. Every single Democrat, every single one of them on that floor voted against Kevin McCarthy, the speaker at the time. That tells you something, and only a small handful of Republicans. But it is time to move on, and I think at this point, Jim Jordan's the man. Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, that is a sad state of affairs. I agree with you, Congressman. But, you know, a lot of people are wondering whether or not these investigations are going to continue now with Kevin out. Uh, I'm talking about the weaponization uh, investigation, weaponization of the uh, federal uh, agencies, as well as the investigation into uh, the Biden family influence peddling. What's your sense of that? Oh, my sense is they're going to continue. And that's the shame of this, Maria. You know, we didn't keep our eye on the ball. Let me tell you, this is the real deal. It's about the end game. Yeah. People ask me all the time on the, on the floor of the House, they'll come up to me and say, Jeff, what was the difference five years ago in being in the Democratic caucus? And of course, as you know, I couldn't stand it anymore and I changed. Let me tell you the difference. They always are thinking about the end game. You know what the end game is to them? Power. Changing the entire structure of America yeah. and making sure that they win. We have to look at the end game all the time. This is part of our end game. Yeah, it's true. I feel like a lot of the decisions made are having to do with them staying in power. I want to I get to other things, so uh, let me move on because I want to get the panel in as well. The New York civil fraud trial against the Trump Organization now in a fourth day today. The 2024 front runner will not be appearing in the courtroom today, Donald Trump, after attending the first first three days of this trial. Yesterday, Trump blasted New York Attorney General Letitia James. He's calling her, uh, uh, you know, in, in, uh, election interferer. He's accusing her of trying to keep him off the campaign trail. Watch this. I'd rather be right now in Iowa. I'd rather be in New Hampshire or South Carolina or Ohio or a lot of other places, but I'm stuck here because I have a corrupt attorney general that communicates with the DOJ in Washington to keep me nice and busy because I'm leading Biden in the polls by a lot. Yeah, and Congressman, we're also learning that the judge presiding over Trump's New York City case has reportedly only donated to Democrats. Uh, what a shocker. He's given more than $5,000 over the past 25 years. Congressman, should he be recusing himself here? Oh, he should. I mean, we have people in these positions, unfortunately now, in certain states that have no idea of their state constitution, no idea of the rule of law, no idea, of course, of the federal constitution. What, you know, Trump isn't being prosecuted. He's being persecuted, for real. And they're trying to send the message out. Yeah. If you disagree with this ultra-left mantra, not only is your, you know, the the, ex, the former president and soon to be president again, but we're going to go after him and we're going to go after you. And you know that they're doing that at every level. That's what our hearings and judiciary showed. You know, if you were a practicing traditional Roman Catholic, you were in trouble. If you were a person that spoke out at school board meetings, you were in trouble. If you wanted to express your viewpoint on Facebook or Twitter, now X, whatever, you're in trouble. Yeah. And we have the proof. We have the emails. This is, this is not the United States of America. 
we've ever known. This it's, is it's very concerning, actually, and I'm glad you raised this because Newsweek is reporting that uh, supporters of former yeah. President Trump are now being targeted by the FBI as the 2024 election nears. They reviewed classified data, which shows that the vast majority of the FBI's anti-government investigations are of Trump supporters. Okay, the FBI is pushing back on this, saying that they do not target Trump supporters, Congressman. But we're seeing the evidence of it. The Federalist is writing about it as well, saying testimony from more than a dozen current or former government officials who specialize in terrorism uh, spoke to. Newsweek and confirmed that this increase in targeting was born out of the FBI's decision to lump Trump supporters into an expanded definition of domestic extremism. Are you kidding me? Uh, it, it's awful. And you know what? We have real terrorists that are on the terror watch list that are still escaping into our country. We have the drug cartel yeah. escaping into our country, establishing businesses. Maybe the FBI would have worry about that. But what they're doing, Maria, this is so important and it's so terrible. They're putting out a message that if you are conservative, if you support Donald Trump, you may very well lose everything in your life. You know what? Yeah. One quick story. A lady comes up to me the other day, says, I really want to help you. I want to support you. I want to support Donald Trump looks me in the eye and says, but I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah, every, yeah, exactly. Everyone is scared. They, they are just intimidating people. Todd Pyro, jump in here because you've seen this as well. We've seen it, but Congressman, when Congress, when the House gets back, can't you call Christopher Ray to the carpet? to the floor and basically say, what's going on here? Because every time you bring him in the past, it's always looking in the past, right? This is one of those situations where, to your point, if people don't feel like they're comfortable enough expressing their support for Donald J. Trump, that impacts the vote. And that is obviously forward looking. So what are you going to be and doing? It's election with to interference. This? Yes. Well, as you know already, I mean, all the information you hear about, by the way, people say, is it important to have a Republican majority? All the stuff that you all are talking about that you know is came out of judiciary or oversight and sometimes ways and means. If we didn't have the Republican majority, nobody would know about this stuff. We beat the daylights out of Christopher Ray for what he did. We had Attorney General Merrick Orland, and you saw my exchange with him. Yeah. I, I would assume you saw it anyhow. Um, we have to keep up the pressure. We have to stop that for the sake of America, for Americans, and for the sake of freedom. This yeah. is really the most serious of stuff. Well, we're also waiting for, you know, the uh, the, the uh, subpoena of Hunter Biden. Real quick, you wanted to jump in here, Tim. Yes, uh, just on a side note, uh, Bob Menendez belaguered dealing with his second round of corruption indictments. Uh, Congressman, your name has been floated as a potential challenger if he decides to hold on to that seat despite, Dem despite Democrats asking him to step down. Have you considered throwing your hat in the ring for that New Jersey Senate seat? I have considered it very seriously. Uh, I think it's time in New Jersey. We have a lot of good, hardworking people that are tired of the high taxes, tired of worrying when these undocumented illegals are going to be coming into our state. Because let me tell you, yeah. they are coming into every state of the union. They're tired of business as usual, and they want something different. And I think it is time for a solid conservative to think about this, whether it's me or somebody else. But I am taking it seriously. I'm really looking into it. Great. I'm going to continue to do so. All right. We'll, we'll watch that, Congressman. Thanks very much. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Pleasure. Jeff Van Drew is in New Jersey this morning.